Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Manoj Sakya. Uh, I'm the host of this uh, uh, session. This is so, this so, and uh, this so is called Student Lecture Series, and we are in the episode 19. And today we have invited uh, one of my friends, Chong Chang. Uh, he is uh, uh, in in CIL lab. He's working currently working in CIL lab and. Uh, uh, he's a PhD candidate, but he has already submitted the thesis. That's a good part of, uh, uh, yeah, that's a good part of uh, Mr. Chong. So uh, today's title is Multi-Agent Deep Reinforcement Learning for Multiple TSP with Time Window and Rejection. That's what you can see on the slide. So I first request all of you uh, to, to mute yourself. And uh, once the presentation is over, if you have queries or questions, you can you can put them straight forward. I mean, unmute yourself, and then you can put the questions, or uh, you can write your query in the chat box, and I will uh, definitely uh, you know share that questions with uh, Chong. So, Mr. Chong, he has uh, completed his bachelor's uh, from the Department of Mathematical Sciences, University of Liverpool, UK, and Department of Applied Mathematics of Xi'an uh, Chiaotong Liverpool University, China in 2015. He received a, a master's degree uh, from Department of Computing of Empirical College London, UK in 2016. And currently he's a PhD student. Uh, his interest is reinforcement learning, graph neural networks, and uh, his work is related to jobs of scheduling and intelligent vehicle routing. So I, I am very sure that this topic is really, really interesting because deep reinforcement learning is currently uh, a big, big buzzword for those who are working in the field of machine learning. And we are gonna see like how deep reinforcement learning can be used for something very complex problem like traveling salesman problem. So Chong, without further ado, uh, your, the stage is here now. You can uh, please start your presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam, for introduction. Uh, it's my great honor to deliver this presentation in this seminar. And my name is Zhang Tong, and today's topic will be the multi-agent deep reinforcement learning algorithms for solving the combinator optimization problem, which is the multiple TSP with time window and rejection. So this presentation will be uh, normally divided into three parts. The first part, I will give a, you a brief introduction about the problem itself. Second part, I will show you our approach, a manager worker deep reinforcement learning framework to solve this problem. And finally, I will show you some results where we have some, we have find some interesting uh, results uh, regarding this problem. So uh, for you who is not um, from uh, the optimization or mathematical domain, here in the, this is a brief introduction of the traveling salesman problem, which is the TSP. So the problem itself is very simple to understand. So uh, like if you have a map, then you, there are a multiple customers or locations that should distribute it around this map and you are a salesman. So you want to visit each customer or location once and only once such that the total travel distance is a minimum. So this is the actually of an optimization problem. Um, so the question here is very simple. Can you find a can you plan a tour for the salesman such that the total length of the travel distance is minimum? Uh, actually, this is a very famous, well-known, um, widely studied problem in the mathematical domain, especially for the mathematical optimization domain, where people use the traditional methods like the meta heuristic, for example, like the genetic programming or the exact method like the uh, branch and bound or some mathematical uh, linear uh, integer programming, some mathematical tools to solve this problem. However, during the recent years, we have witnessed the growing trend and interest in solving this problem using machine learning methods. So here I listed two signature and milestone work for this domain, which is uh, uh, listed here down below in the slides. And especially if you are very interested, I highly recommend you to pay more attention to the second work, which with the title Attention Learn to Solve Routing Problems, where they use the, the well-known self-attention mechanism to solve and deep reinforcement learning algorithm to solve this 
uh, traveling salesman problem. Okay, so this is actually the brief uh, introduction to the problem, to the very uh, simple traveling sales, salesman problem itself. So in this work, in my uh, publication, we consider a more um, we consider a more uh, realistic variant of the TSP, which we call the uh, multiple traveling salesman problem with time window and rejection. And in this problem, uh, instead of uh, instead of having a single delivery guy, we have multiple salesmen. Which we this is the reason why we call this uh, the multiple TSP. And uh, at the same time. Um, so the delivery guy, each delivery guy is responsible for making delivery or, or service for its own customers. And each customer has a time window. So for example, here in this, in this uh, uh, black dot representing a customer, we can have a time window for this customer. So each customer will have a time window. So the left number indicating the open time, the left no the right number indicating the end time of the time window. So the customer must be uh, served or visited within this time window. Otherwise, um, it is subject to rejection. So which will cause and this will incur a penalty for the, for, for example, for the logistic company. And uh, at the same time, the company, uh, so the objective for the company is try to serve as many customers as possible to reduce the penalty. And at the same time, meanwhile, the company tries to find the uh, best tour in terms of the travel distance for each for each salesman to reduce the traveling cost. So actually, the objective is twofold. One fold, the company wants to serve as many customers as possible. On the other hand, the company wants to the largest company want to uh, find the. Uh, tour with the minimum travel distance such that the tra traveling cost is reduced. So actually we have two objectives here. So uh, in our work, we combine these two objectives into a hybrid loss. Okay, so the L here representing the distance, the length of the tour. And, uh, and, we, uh, and the second term is a re rejection rate, indicating how many customers are rejected. Uh, based on the, based on the current solution, so uh, actually for this uh, combined objective, we have we can have two different versions. The first version is we want we can minimize the overall cost of this objective. So which means we want, want to minimize the total uh, rejection rate of all salesmen and the total reject uh, and minimize the total length of all sub tours of all salesmen. So another version where we, we can minimize the worst case. So for example, we can, uh, let's imagine we have three uh, salesmen and each salesman can have his own tour and each tour have its own such, uh, rejection rate and travel distance. So in this case, we can minimize the worst sub tour. So uh, actually we did experiment on both objectives. However, we find that the objective of the min max objective it's more uh, realistic and more aligned with uh, real cases. So uh, in the, in the like, result part of this presentation, I will also show you some findings uh, with, re with respect to the different objectives. Okay, so uh, here we, uh, we, we use the min-max uh, objective as, as our uh, loss function. Okay, uh, yeah, and we also make an assumption that the salesman depart from the depot. Okay, so this position, the position of the depot is fixed in this map. However, the location of each customer can be random. Okay, this is our uh, problem and objectives. Okay, so uh, by having this problem at hand, then the common question is, can we, how can we solve this problem using machine learning frame, frameworks? As we all know, the deep reinforcement learning is, uh, is a, a control algorithm that can control uh, uh, intelligent agent to solving tasks. So by having this kind of uh, con controllable agent, how can we um, use deep reinforcement learning as a technique to solve this problem? That is to say, that, that is to ask uh, us two questions. So if we want to use a deep reinforcement learning algorithm, how many deep reinforcement learning algorithm agent can we, we should use? 
and and if we use multiple agents for solving this task, how they should cooperate to solve this problem. Okay. In the next slides, we propose to use two kinds of different uh, deep reinforcement learning agents. The first one, which we call the manager agent, and the second one we call the worker agent. So the manager agent is to assign customers to worker. And the worker, by having the assigned customers, it will plan the tour for each salesman. So this task is divided into, into a two phase uh, problems. In the first phase, the manager agent needs to consume the instance at hand and to somehow assign the customers to each salesman. So for example, here in, in the instance here, the customer somehow assign uh, this four, uh, these five nodes, the, these five uh, location of customers to the blue salesman and these five uh, customers to the red uh, salesman. And then it, it will pass this uh, problem to the worker agent and this worker agent will work out for each salesman, how this salesman should travel to uh, deliver his services to make the rejection rate and the tour less minimum. So this is actually the uh, logic flow of our, our framework. So by having this logic flow, we propose the overall framework of our uh, method. So on the left part, we have our um, manager agent. So we have an instance and we have multiple uh, vehicles, which is the salesman. And then we can, we, the manager agent will assign different, uh, will assign uh, customers to different uh, vehicles or salesmen. And then this each sub problem will pass to the worker agent and the worker agent will out, work out for each sub problem, the exact, the exact tour for each salesman. And we can cut and, this is the final solution and we can calculate the hybrid loss, which is the mean max loss for training our uh, two agents. So this is actually the framework of our, our of, uh, DRL framework. Okay. And let's dive into a little bit to the details of the framework. So uh, this is the detailed architecture for the manager agent. Uh, as you can see, the, as you can see, the uh, instance is a bunch of nodes right, the locations of the customers and the depot. So we propose to, mo to model this instance as a fully connected graph. So here I made a, an example where we have four, uh, we ha where we have uh, six customers and one depot and then we connect them mutually. So each node is connected with every other node in this graph. So this is a fully connected graph and then this is actually, and each node will have its own attributes, which consisted of the, the uh, X, Y coordinates of this node, which is the location of the node and the time window for this node. So we have, so, so for each node, we have a uh, four dimensional feature, raw features. Then we pass this graph into a, a graph neural network, which we use the, the GIN uh, for graph embedding, the, uh, graph isomorphism network, shorted as a GIN. Then this graph, uh, uh, this graph neural network will learn the embeddings for each node. The C here stands for the customers and the D here stands for depot. So we, after this uh, neural network, we can have an embedding of the cost for each customer and we have, can have an embedding for our depot. And we use a merge function, a readout function here to merge the embedding of the customers and depot to get a vectorized embedding for our problem. So the HGI is an embedding for our problem. And then we uh, concat the depot embedding with the problem uh, embedding to form our context vector, right? So, and then this is our learned customer embeddings and context vector. And then we pass this, this to a second module, which is the vehicle embedding module. This module is based on the self-attention. And uh, uh, briefly, this module, uh, what the, this module do, what the, this module does is to um, learn the vehicle embeddings. It will jointly consider the, the embedding of the customers and the embedding of the uh, contacts 
to learn the embedding of the uh, vehicles. And after we got the embedding of the vehicles and the embedding of the customers, we, uh, we are uh, at the third module, which is the customer assignment module, which will assign the customer to each uh, vehicle. So here, the output of this customer assigned module is a prob probability vector. So the, for example, in the first uh, vector, it represents the, prob the probability of assigning customer one to each uh, salesman. So for example, the P11 here is the probability of assigning of assigning customer one to salesman number one, and the P21 is the probability of assigning uh, customer one to salesman number two, et cetera. And for this one, we can find the maximum, the, we can find the largest probability, and then we, which determines, uh, which determines the salesman uh, we assign this customer to. So for, for, for each customer, we find the, the largest probability and we assign this customer to this uh, to the vehicle according to the proportional according to the uh, probability. So this is actually the the, the manager agent. So after this uh, determining the customer assignment, then each sub problem is a TSP TWR, which is a troubling assessment with some with time window and rejection, which can solved by the worker agent as proposed in our framework. So for the worker agent, we directly apply an architecture from uh, this publication. And, um, and, we, I, and I want to um, omit the details for this, for this one because they, they use some complex design uh, to um, and refinement in their work. So I will not dive into too much about this work. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you to refer to this publication for details. So actually in one word, this work is just proposed a DRL method based on, based on this one, the attention then to solve routing problems. So for solving a single, uh, a single salesman, the TSP traveling salesman with time and rejection problem. So we basically uh, rely on this for, for our worker agent. Okay, so after we um, design, uh, after we find, uh, after we uh, got these two agents, the, another uh, question comes to mind is how can we train these two agents? So um, um, there are two ways actually can train these two agents. The one way I think most of you can think of is to train these two agents jointly. Um, by jointly, I mean you, uh, you train this agent uh, at the same time. So, um, such that we can solve the problem. However, we actually try this strategy. We find this strategy will cause some uh, very uh, bad issues in, uh, in terms of the learning outcome. It will not converge and will uh, greatly uh, harm the uh, stability of the training process. So, we instead we train the two agents jointly. We propose to, to train them uh, separately. In the first case, we join we train them. We train we train the worker agent such that the worker agent can solve the sub problem very well. And then we by using the by uh, plug in the trained worker agent, we then we train the manager agent. So there there actually is a reason. So if we train the manager and worker jointly, there will be a compound error causing non-stationary non issues. So if the worker agent cannot give the good solutions to sub routing problem, how can the manager agent distinguish between the bad assignment or bad routing? So, and this error can be built up. So which means, so uh, which means let's uh, go back to the example, it's because the task for the manager agent is to learn good assignment for each subtask. Based on the feedback of the uh, worker agent, so in in the case where the worker agent not work very well, the feedback can be misleading for the manager agent. In the man in this case, in, in such case, the manager agent will not know if the if the outcome is bad. Is it because of the bad assignment or is it because of the bad worker agent? 
Okay, so let's imagine in a, a, real, a real case scenario, if you are a manager of a company and you want to uh, coordinate your uh, workers to, to, to accomplish some tasks and the outcome of the task is bad, then you will be confusing, right? So you, you don't know why, you don't know the reason why, uh, you don't know if the reason is because of the uh, bad uh, task assignment or comes or because of the bad uh, solution from, the, from your worker. So in this case, we also uh, witness such uh, phenomenon in our training process. So we propose to train the worker agent first, and then we train the customer, the manager man, manager agent later after we train the worker agent. So this is the uh, intuitive motivation why we propose this two-phase training process for our learning uh, framework. So here uh, come some uh, come some results. We did the experiment. We want to uh, emphasize two uh, points here. So for the baselines, we actually compare with some meta heuristic. So the meta heuristic methods are not learning based method. They are mathematical method. They are heuristic method. For example, the uh, the, the taboo search method and uh, those uh, methods from mathematical domain. And we also uh, compare with the AM method. The AM is actually the this one, so the second second reference, it, it is a learning method, but without the manager worker framework. And, and the second one is that we want, uh, we, we, and we, we can see that our algorithm on, on the small scale problem, this number here indicates the number of the customers of this instance. For, so for example, here is indicating we want to solve the customer, the instance with 50 customers and 100 customers, 150 customers, and etc. So we can see here on a small scale problem, our method actually did not perform very good, very well compared with the meta heuristic method. However, as the scale of the problems goes up, our algorithms significantly outperforms the traditional meta heuristic method. And the second point I, I want to emphasize is the is that our method has a zero shot generalization ability, which means we only train our method on the problems of 50 and 100, and we directly apply the train method to solve the problem of 300 customers to 500 customers without training. So this uh, zero shot generalization, I think is one of the motivations why we apply the machine learning techniques here to solve this combinatorial optimization problem. So as you all know, the meta heuristic method for each instance, it will solve this instance and this problem from scratch. Each, each instance, no matter the size of this instance, it will solve from scratch. It will consume a um, uh, certain amount of computational resource. However, for the machine learning method, after we train, we can directly apply the train method to infer, fastly infer a solution for much larger size of the problem. So the, I think this is one of the great uh, motivation why we apply the machine learning techniques to solve this problem. And uh, another some, uh, and some other findings. So as I mentioned before, we actually test different uh, objectives. So uh, let's first look at the, the pictures, the, the figures in the middle and on, on the right. So actually, this is actually the uh, number of the assigned customers for each instance. Um, let me explain you what this uh, figure means. So uh, let's imagine the overall objective. So in the overall case, you want to minimize the overall uh, rejection rate and minimize the overall travel distance for all salesmen. So in this case, maybe, maybe there is a solution that some, some uh, where in this solution, some salesmen do not get assignment, right? And some salesmen maybe get more assignment. Why? Because you want to minimize the overall objective. So in the overall objective, this might be a better solution. And however, if you want to 
uh, optimize the min max of objective, you want to minimize the, the, the upper bound, the lower bound, the best, the worst case of your salesman, then this cannot happen because, uh, because if, if a salesman got uh, many assignments, then the tour length of this salesman must be much bigger than the rest of the salesman. So in this case, so actually uh, the min max objective mo uh, encourage the agents to learn strategies that can assign customers more evenly than the uh, overall objective. So this is actually the outcome, the, what, exactly what these two figures want to tell us. So the blue part is the uh, assignment of the number, uh, is the number of assignment customers for overall objective. And the orange part is the number of assignment customers for the min max objective. As you can see, for the, for the overall objective, some customer, some salesman got zero assignments and some, some salesman got very large number of assignments. So this is very imbalanced. So for, however, for the min max problem, because we want to minimize the worst case, each uh, salesman got the assignments and the, sign, and the customers are distributed more evenly by using the min max of objective. So we did ex the experiment in two cases. The first case is 100 uh, customers with five salesmen. And another case is 100 customers with 10 salesmen. So in these two cases, we all see that the main max objective can learn a better and more even uh, distribution of customers to salesmen. So this is the uh, why we use the min max optimization? Because let, let's imagine you are, you are in a company, you have uh, five salesmen, you don't want to let certain salesmen to be no work to do, right? You want them to have uh, uh, even work to do. So this is why we want to use the min max objective. So the, on the figure on, uh, on, the, on the left, we did an, the experiment on the parameter of beta. So to record the parameter of beta, here, this is just a hyperparameter to uh, adjust the weight of the rejection rate and the tour length. So if the parameters are much bigger, which means the rejection play a major role in this overall objective, then the agent should pay more attention to minimize this part. If the beta is small, then the tour length may be more significant. Then the agent may be learned to minimize this part. So we want to do an application study on beta to see whether this uh, learning outcome can be uh, successfully uh, learned by uh, using different values of beta. So here is our uh, experiment results. As the value of the beta increase, we can see that the tour lengths are decreasing because we are rejecting more and more customers. However, the, however, the rejection rate is uh, the rejection rate is decreasing because we want to serve as many customers as possible. Uh, in, at the same time, because we serve too many customers, the tour length is increasing, right? Because we want we we need to uh, spend more fuel or other costs to travel such long distances. So this is the uh, uh, actually the influence of, of uh, parameter beta. Yeah, uh, basically my presentation here is. Uh, over, yeah. Thank you, uh, Chong. Uh, that's a very wonderful presentation. I mean, uh, it was very uh, clear. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me see if uh, uh, if there is anyone you know having queries right now. Uh, I request they can you know unmute themselves and uh, ask a questions. So let's wait uh, the questions from the audience. But uh, I quickly uh, ask one, one very simple question to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you applied min max uh, concept, right? To, to solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, right, how, how important is this problem to be solved. I know traveling salesman problem, and it has been uh, a very popular among 
uh, the mathematician basically i guess even even those who are working in algorithms definitely uh, traveling salesman problem is one of the very beautiful problems and it's very hard to solve uh, as far as i i remember but you know uh, putting the constraint another constraint like uh, window frame time window frame there how how you know uh, important that problem um, to be solved in your opinion um i think um so in general this traveling salesman problem um have some intense application in, in industry uh for example in um uh, logistic company right yeah um uh, so the practical value of solving this problem is significant mm -hmm. i see Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, but, so, so in your opinion, like for example, supply chain management. So this yeah. kind of uh, problem plays a very important role. Yeah, this kind of problem is always play an, an important role in supply chain uh, industry. Uh, okay. Yeah, from from uh, tens of years ago. Okay. And yeah, but um, I want to say that using machine learning to solve this kind of problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is just a beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In in many case, in many mm. case, the machine learning uh, algorithm cannot be very competitive mm. in terms of the solution quality compared with the a mature a meta heuristic method or some uh, widely used uh, method. Uh, uh, yeah. But but one advantage of using machine learning techniques to solve this kind of problem is that mm. as the problem complexity goes up. For the heuristic okay. heuristic method, you need to design many uh, design many uh, many complex mechanism with expert expertise knowledge. Okay. And, yeah. For example, um, you want to find some critical features of your problem. Mm -hmm. However, as the problem com complexity goes up, this kind of features is very difficult to identify manually or using some traditional method. In okay. this case. In this case, I think machine learning can be a better choice because because of the uh, learning ability of neural network. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing I want to share is that um, instead of com instead of stand as a competitor against uh, traditional method, we can actually combine the learning method with traditional methods to boost their performance or to address their limitations. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because in the in the first phase, in the very beginning, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. tried to design end to end method for solving this kind of problem, and use a meta heuristic method or conventional method as a baseline compared mm -hmm. with their learning based method. However, they find problems because they okay. find they they find in many cases their machine learning algorithm cannot beat the uh, traditional counterpart. So people tries to turn around to tries to why shouldn't we use machine learning to address the limitation of those solvers or of those uh, methods instead of designing a completely new one as a competitor to those methods. So actually combining machine learning with uh, traditional method is now a very popular uh, strategy for solving, uh, especially for solving routing problems in the com uh, academic community nowadays. Yeah, because people have uh, witnessed the power of machine learning and um, in, in terms of uh, the learning ability, I mean to learn the uh, high level uh, embeddings or high level uh, problem features or in terms of uh, learning. So they combine this learning ability with traditional method to boost their performance in terms of the solution quality or computational time, reduce the computational time and uh, mm. other and many many other things right but machine learning solution doesn't provide the exact solution yeah it doesn't provide the exact problem. yeah so yeah. for this kind of problem you can have a uh, two types of solutions one is the exact solution one is uh, mm. a, approximate solution approximation yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, for the most of the uh, algorithms they can only give you the approximate solution Right. you cannot guarantee you the exact solution 
right. if you use the uh, exact method like the mm -hmm. mixer mix integer linear programming those um, mm -hmm. uh, pure mathematical tool then mm -hmm. it guarantees you the solution the exact solution to the problem however it will consume much longer time oh uh, yeah because uh, yeah so so one of the thing one of the direction i saw using mm -hmm. machine learning is to boost the speed of those exact oh, okay. solvers in okay. this case you can get the exact solution at the same time you can mm -hmm. you can you can uh, reduce the amount of time for computing those exact solutions Okay, uh, a very quick question. Uh, I got some questions in the chat also. Yeah. And uh, let's first uh, address those uh, chat queries. Uh, or, uh, okay, okay. BJ, yeah, uh, yeah. Can, can you wait for a couple of minutes? So okay. I think uh, the question coming from Pasqual is very similar to mine. He, he says, I consider traveling salesman hmm. problem a textbook example of an NP hard problem. Absolutely true. That's yeah. uh, no doubt. So is it having a real world impact for shipping company? Shipping companies is like logistics or supply chain companies, I, I think. Okay. Uh, do you want to add some, some questions to this, pro, uh, I mean, answers to this question, uh, yes, Chong? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. uh, so um, for the maritime domain, I'm not very familiar. However, mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, logistic domain, um, I can see that uh, many, many companies are now um, tries to collaborate with uh, machine learning um, laboratories okay. to, to, to propose the uh, learning-based solutions for this kind of problem. Mm -hmm. um, one, one instant example is that my supervisor is try, uh, now trying to collaborate with uh, a local company, a logistic company to do some uh, projects on the mm -hmm. uh, routing problems using machine learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in those uh, problem, the company raises, I can see some, there is some part particularly suited for uh, machine learning. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, for example, the, the, the aspect I have mentioned in the previous uh, question, in the answer of the previous question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think it will have a real impact for shipping companies. But however, I don't think it will have an instant impact. Okay, and okay, yes, I, I agree I, with you. Yeah, as I said, this is the only the beginning of this. Uh, this field is only at its beginning. So, mm -hmm. so I think most of the shipping company or logistics company now are still using the traditional but reliable method. Okay, so yeah. let me let me quickly put one more question. Does it require retraining when number of workers is changing? Uh, so Wei is asking this question. Yes, this actually is a very uh, good question. So mm. as you see in my, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, can you see the? Yeah, yeah, we can see the slides. As you can see, we, we mm -hmm. do a one of them, we do a generalization on the problem scale, right? So yeah. for different problem scale, for the much larger scale, we, de we do not need to, to retrain our method. We can directly mm -hmm. apply our method on mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. on the on a, on the larger instance uh, and for other types of uh, variant i think mm -hmm. the the audience with the audience case let, let me see the see the problem uh, where can you see the problem so uh, actually uh, anyway I, actually i want to share is that so in the machine learning domain for this uh, specific uh, task people are now trying to design generalizable machine learning techniques. Mm -hmm. So which means you can design only one uh, machine learning model that can be generalizable to different types of traveling salesman problem at the same time. So oh. in this case, with, uh, with some differences, you do not need to retrain your model. Okay. Your model okay. can be directly generalized to those kinds of variables. Okay. So this is a very popular and hot topic, mm, an emerging right. topic right. in the uh, machine learning for traveling salesman problem. Nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And agree. and they use the uh, train uh, pre-training and fine-tuning technique, and meta-learning mm. technique. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I saw. I, I can see there are three different types of generalization. One is the size generalization, which means you train on small size and test uh, and directly apply on large size, mm -hmm. and the one on generalize for distribution. Mm -hmm. So, for example, some cities have a certain layout of the road, so the distribution of the customers may be different 
mm. to the city uh, to 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 those in, in another city with uh, right. different uh, row, row, uh, layout. Mm -hmm. Yes, so in this case, uh, you can train a generalizable machine learning technique in mm -hmm. one city, but can be generalizable to another city. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. so so this is yeah. a second case for generalization of uh, distribution, and the mm -hmm. third one is to generalize for constraint. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think the third one is the most difficult one, right? Mm. Uh, and uh, currently, there are not many so ma uh, not many uh, existing art for investigating this problem. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but right. I can see that it, there there is a trend that people mm -hmm. uh, have tend to uh, investigate this kind of generalization problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that's a kind of uh, opportunity for. Yes, for, yes. for PhD students, I guess. So uh, let's continue the conversation. Uh, BJ, uh, you, you wanna you wanna put some question queries? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, uh, I, my question is also related to the length. For example, yeah. if if the graph that is being input like in front of the GN layer, if it is very large, was there any analysis of uh, using some attention methods there? Because I I mm -hmm. saw like some of the uh, places you you use uh, some of the background from the Wutter Cool and Maxwelling paper of 2018 yeah. year right and yeah. they use attention so yeah. <clears throat> uh, one thing about the graph isomorphism network layer is that it does not do well on larger graphs graphs which have more node sizes and that's yeah. a known result by now so was there any analysis of uh, when the input graph is larger and if any attention based mechanism in terms of graph your network does better than the gene layer or was it not done some kind of analysis like that yeah so uh yeah good question so uh, as you mentioned in the water cruise paper the, the, the i think the they, they use the self-attention mechanism right so for the self-attention when you have a much uh, when you have a large network for example like with 500 nodes um it cannot be trained due to the out of memory issue because the because of the uh, self attention network itself, so the architecture of the self attention network determines it is the memory consumable uh, architecture and model. So if you have a much larger um, graph with so many nodes, then self attention is maybe not a good choice. So in my work, I use the graph isomorphism network. One of the reason is that. Uh, we find the performance is um, relatively better because we compare the performance with a vanilla message passing network, right? So, uh, yeah. So another thing, uh, yeah. another thing, yeah. Another thing I, I, I want to share is that, um, which is which is uh, which is the point I have already shared during the presentation at CIL. So, um, so if you have a graph. If, I, if you have a graph, the graph have two fold uh, uh, information. One is from its topology, one is from its uh, node attributes. So the topology, if you think the topology of the graph is more important, I think you should not use the attention-based network. Because in the attention-based network, especially for self-attention, each node are paying attention to every other node. So they are mutually connected so which omits the topology of the graph. So, uh, uh, so in this case, if, if the topology is more, is more important than the node attribute, I recommend you to use other uh, architecture, for example, the graph isomorphism network, because the GIN has been proved to have a discriminative uh, power uh, on the graph topology, right? Uh, however, uh, there is a conflict because uh, here we model the a graph as a fully connected one. Why shouldn't we use <laughs> the attention-based network rather than the uh, GIN? Uh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, this is a very uh, yeah. tricky, tricky, tricky uh, question to answer. The so, only, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get a lot of the points and, and yeah. I agree that, for example, the size, we cannot simply do self-attention over like 500 graphs. So uh, that's true. So what I was wondering is, uh, I mean, if obviously if we have such kind of topology information to consider and we want mm -hmm. to incorporate the structure, we must use some graph-based neural network yeah. and gene is one of the correct choices. So, for example, if there's attention, we do not use sim 
similar to the quadratic attention used in the uh, cool paper or some of the other attention based works but what i was wondering is instead of the graph isomorphism networks message passing mm -hmm. uh, if we can if we can use uh, the graph attention networks so there's attention in the gnn side also a lot of works and it does not have to necessarily be n squared so for example if in graph attention yeah. uh, the attention can be sparse if, uh, it can only be sparse so in that case it will work with 500 nodes also simply yes. self attention will not work because of the quadratic complexity but yes. if we want to use the topology as well as the features then uh, the graph attention network is one of the way to do that because it is a graph neural network yes, but I, at the, same yes, time, the, the, the function is uh, is attention it's like the softmax Yes, yes. yeah yeah but otherwise i agree like if i mean if we have topology then we must be not we must be using some graph neural network because it can better understand the topology and i think on the other side like there has been a lot of work in the attention in jnn that does uh address some of these questions such as the complexity of yes yes quadratic yeah mm -hmm. so Anyways, yeah, it's just a, just a question, just a yeah, thought. I mean, it's yeah. not that uh, there can be follow-up works also on all yeah, this. I, I, yeah, I think the, yeah, I think the paper you mentioned, the GHE, the graph attention network, mm -hmm. is a very good instance of combining the message passing with attention. Yeah. And uh, it reduced the uh, uh, memory complexity and also uh, consider the topology of the graph. I think it's a very good instance for for for, for uh, graph learning. Yeah, in, in, in case you, you don't know uh, what exactly kind of network you want you will try to apply i think the graph attention is always be a good choice to start with yeah yeah i agree with you absolutely yeah, yeah. okay yeah. thank you so yeah. much Vijay, yeah. uh, thank you thank you for the question uh we have uh, uh chiwe here he ha has a question chiwe uh you can unmute yourself and please put forward your question uh okay so uh, Johnson, can you hear me yes yes oh thanks for your very nice presentation and Yes. and it's very interesting so uh, i'm also uh, uh did some did some work on, on the reinforcement learning on, okay. on the control of mechanical system so okay. uh I, i'm wondering what, uh, why you we can apply reinforcement learning mm. in solving the travel spam problem mm. uh, what is the environment uh in in the context of this problem and mm. uh, what yeah, what are the state and action space uh, mm. for your problem? Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, you'll ask some details about the uh, algorithm itself. So uh, for your first question, why, why, why uh, deep, deep reinforcement learning can be applied to solve this kind of problem? So one of the motivation is that this is an NP hard um, uh, problem as mentioned by, uh, oh, uh, the, actually this is an NP hard problem. So you cannot, use the um, uh, supervised learning based method, like um, for example, the imitation learning uh, as, uh, as many people do, because you, it's very hard to get a high, uh, high quality solutions for each instance. Yes. So, yeah, so this is the, only, this is the most uh, uh, motivation for us to use reinforcement learning because it's a try and error okay. based method. Yeah, we can let the agent to, to search for the uh, better solution, for the solution, uh, for the better and better mm -hmm. solution. And for your uh, second question, the state and uh, uh, reward and uh, other uh, component, the MDP modeling. Um, mm. For the state, um, so, okay, uh, let me uh, go to the, yeah. So, uh, so let, let's uh, use the manager agent as, a, as an example. So the state is actually the fully connected graph. So, mm. in, so in this work, so, so, in, so for the manager agent, there is, there is no state transition. So this is a one step MDP modeling. Mm. And uh, uh, at the very beginning, the, the initial state is a fully connected graph. Uh, mm. And then we pass this graph to uh, this, uh, a bunch of neural network and it mm. learns the probability of assigning each customers, right? Mm. Then yes. this, this is the one step decision-making actually. Um, okay. Uh, it's actually, um, yeah, uh, uh, let, let me uh, explain a, li a little bit more. Actually, this is the reg uh, autoregressive model. So, so for the, uh, for the uh, state, it's actually a fully connected graph. And we pass this graph to, to a graph embedding. And this uh, graph embedding 
will only process this graph only once and to get the custom embeddings uh, and the contact vectors and, and etc. Then mm. we we you so uh, we then we um, no no I, let me think uh, yeah so for the graph embedding and the vehicle embedding this is uh, uh, you can forget about what I said before so let me re-explain what, what is going on here so the state actually is a fully connected graph and here we use the encoder decoder uh, architecture for our manager agent so the encoder will digest the fully connected graph and calculate the, the uh, related embeddings, for example, the vehicle embedding, the customer embeddings, then that, that's it. This is uh, all work are, all work is done for, uh, for, for the encoder. And for decoder is a, actually an autoregressive model. So, so each time it will, uh, it will use, uh, so each time the, 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 the decoder, which is a customer assignment model, will use the customer embeddings to query with the vehicle embedding uh, embeddings to uh, generate an, an assignment for a specific customer. And, okay. based on, and, and then based on the, and then it will uh, generate assignment for another, uh, for another uh, customer by, by considering the, the already generated ones. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so in this phase, in the decoding phase, there's no state. So the only information the uh, customer assignment agent have, uh, customer assignment module have, is a vehicle embedding and the custom embedding, and uh, what are the uh, current assignment of the customers. So it's actually a self-regressive uh, process. Uh, maybe I cannot uh, explain very clearly here. I, I, I know I made some confu con confusion. Um, uh, uh, it, yeah. It, yeah it, if you want to know more details, you can. We can discuss offline. But but to answer yeah, your sure. yeah, but, yeah but but to answer your question, um, there is no uh, state transition in this uh, MDP modeling. We are not okay. uh, like the conventional MDP modeling. At one state, we take an action, we get a reward, and we transit to another state to take a future action. This is yeah. not the same. This is not the same like that. We just we just want to, the the state is the initial state is a fully connected graph, and based on this graph, we mm -hmm. we just output the action is output the uh, customer assignment. Then mm -hmm. then then this MVP terminates and ends. And based okay. on the and based on the assignment, we can we can compute the reward, which is the which is a oh, okay. tor tor and then we use this, this reward to train our agent. Okay, I see. So I think mm -hmm. it's more like a, a bandit problem, right? Yes, yes, yes. More like a bandit problem. Okay, okay. Uh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Chiwei, for for a question. And uh, I think we are uh, now in the end of uh, our uh, our wonderful presentation show. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Chong Chang uh, for presenting his work. Uh, so nicely and I really like the presentation the way you explain and the passion that you have uh, that you showed here at least uh, so uh, I, I guess you you'll be a very good teacher in in future so uh, thank you so much uh, Chong Chang and I wish you good luck uh, for the final uh, thesis defense uh, as well and uh, before uh, ending the session I would like to thank all the audience out there who attended this presentation and uh, on behalf of SLS team, on behalf of uh, SASC GSC, uh, I would like to thank every one of you uh, attending this presentation. We will be coming soon uh, with another SLS talk, uh, episode 20, and that would again be very interesting like, uh, like this one. And thank you guys, thank you so much and keep tuning this SLS talk. Chong, uh, once again, thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Everybody, uh, have a good day. And thank you, everyone, once again. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Yes.